What's up guys? I committed myself to making a video a day, so today I'm going to go ahead and show you a tour of my darkroom. I'm actually recording this audio at home because I couldn't make a noise at this time. Or open locks because, you know, I was holding a camera. Got some cameras. A whole bunch of film. More film. Better film, I would say. So here we have loops. We have compressed air for dusting off prints because that's a big problem with black and white photography is that you're going to get a lot of dust on your negatives and it's going to show up in your print. So you always want to keep it clean. Okay, over here we have our negative dryer. Pretty straightforward, it just dries your negatives. Down here we have reels and tanks for processing. Here's my first light table. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys, if you're new to this, what this is for. You're gonna go ahead and just throw your negatives on it so you can view them. It's a good way to check for dust. Um, if you don't make a contact sheet, which is basically a print of all your negatives together, uh, like me, I, I don't make contact sheets typically because I scan, but that's a good way to do it. Let's just take a look there. This is funny. <laughs> This is for making copy, so basically pre-digital, you would have even light set up and then in the middle there you would set up a camera to make copies of images with another camera. It was hilarious, uh, another teacher I worked with was <laughs> excitedly telling me if I ever want to make copies, we have this. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, no, dude, I'm going to scan it. Um, over there we had a print dryer and this is for mounting prints got a stack of prints here because I never take my work home. Drying racks. Not the most ideal way to dry your prints, I would say. To be honest, I prefer to hang and then use a dryer if I have one. Got more workspaces. Alright, so now I'm inside the dark room. This is without any lights, so let me go ahead and flip these on. So this is going to be in reverse order as far as the process goes because right here we have water, the washer actually, which is the last step you're going to use. A whole bunch of chemicals. Diafine, my favorite film developer. Okay. What the hell is this? Yeah, that's me saying what the hell is this because I not familiar with what chemistry this is and I'm not sure right, who mixed I don't know it. What that is. <laughs> okay, so we have developer develops a print. A developer. Stop. Anyway. Bath. And now I'm talking to myself. Ah. Turn more light on. So we have a few different enlargers. Um, I'm not gonna get into how the enlarger works right now. Just cleaning up a bit. This is really exciting, I know, I know. Gonna edit that out, that's for sure. All right, under here, I have paper that's maybe 50 years old down here. Um, slowly, I've been testing each pack out, and I try to document it, at how usable it is, um, how much extra time I think it needs, if it is usable, etc. But a lot of this isn't even made anymore. Uh, here, I just have a little bit fresher paper. This is a light paper safe, so basically in the dark room you don't want to expose your paper, but you don't want to have to dig through your box each time, so instead you keep it in a safe, which is a lot easier to use and access your paper. So 
Well, that's a wrist of paper, which is the house brand of freestyle photo. And I actually think it's fine. Um, it's really just, I think, rebranded Kenmore, or is it Kentmore? I forget. I don't really use much of their products, but it's perfectly fine paper, and it's more affordable than buying Ilford or other brands. So back to the other light table, which rarely gets used because you don't really want to turn that on if there's any paper out. That's a grain finder, so in order so just like when you're pulling focus when you're taking the image, you're going to need to pull focus, uh, well, yeah, pull focus on the enlarger basically when you're printing to make sure the image is in focus. So right now what I'm trying to do is turn on all the safe lights and see if this camera, which is a good camera, but um, I wanted to see if I could get an exposure with all the safe lights on and main lights off. I don't think it worked out, but we're going to find out right now. So it looks pretty dark, and that's not really a great representation of how dark it actually is when you're in here, partly because your eyes do adjust. Uh, also, even at, I think I'm at like an ISO of 5600, and it's still really dark. Here's a print that's drying. Alright, <clears throat> what I have here is a paper safe. Here's me talking again. I probably just exposed this paper. So that's another paper safe. It's just a really old one, actually. It's better built, I would say, than the newer ones. Here, very disorganized, we have a lot of different things. Let's see. Let's wait till I pull in. Okay, we have filters that should be put away in boxes. So the filters are for adding contrast when you're making your prints. Uh, this is a negative carrier for 35 millimeter. We have negative carriers for every size, so there you go. So depending on what size negative you're using, these are just other filters, different type of filter for a different and larger. Um, so depending on what size negative you're printing off of, that's going to determine obviously the size of the negative carrier, but also it's gonna, going to determine the lens for the enlarger. And here's just a, another closer look at cameras, which I actually have way more at home. If this looks bad, I mean, there's I've got like 50 at home. Random lens filters and caps. Stack of film. 